Hello, in this tutorial we will learn how to add special input elements for our scene. These elements allow us to type something in, in our case, to type in the measurements of the cupboards. We will also learn how to anchor them to a point on 3D scene, just like the annotations are done, so we will not have them just flat on a screen, they will be somewhere in the 3D space. Alright, let's start. First, let's create a new puzzle step and call it size. And just as in previous tutorials, let's add puzzle, add HTML elements. Here, instead of div, let's select input. Let's call it w size or its width. And also, let's add right away the puzzle sets property style, so we will be able to see our elements on a scene. Let's press play and here we have our elements. And if I click it, I can type something in. Let's set it up. First, I will make it a little bit smaller. It will be 40 pixels high. The background color will be white. And let's save and reload. Also, let's round the edges. For that, we will need a parameter border radius. Let's set it to 20 pixels. Next, let's add a border for the elements. For that, we will need border parameter, and we talked about it in previous tutorial. So, I will just type in solid. 1 pixel, black. Let's press play and now we have a round black border. Let's also save and reload to clear the cache. Now let's anchor our element to some point on the 3D scene. For that we will need puzzle, binds elements. Let's place it here. Here we need to type in the name of the element that we will be anchoring. And here we need to select the object that we will be anchoring to. I have already prepared the empty, which is called width. Let's press play, and here we go. But the anchor point is not in the center, it is on the top left of the element. So let's shift it a bit. To do that, we will need two parameters. Margin top and margin left. Let's set margin top to minus 20 pixels and margin left to minus 30 pixels. So the half of the element's measurements. Alright, and now the element is centered. Next, let's change the font size. And also let's change the fonts to one that we have already used previously. For that we need font family parameter. Ok, let's change the font size to 20 pixels. And for font family let's type in Oswald. This is the font from previous tutorial. Let's press play and we see that the font and the font size are changed. Also, let's center the text. For that, we will need parameter text align. Let's set it to center. Alright, now the text that we are typing in is right in the center. And the last parameter that I want to use is called box shadow. It will add a little shadow around our elements so it will be a little bit more noticeable. First, let's set horizontal and vertical offset to 0 pixels and the blur will be 6 pixels and the color of the shadow, it will be grey. Let's press play to check how the shadow looks. Ok, now with shadow our element is even more visible. Let's save and reload the scene to clear cache. 
Next, we need to set up the element itself. Right now, I can type in anything like letters, symbols, etc. But I need only digits to be available for input. So, we need to change input options. For that, I will also need set property puzzle. And here, we need the parameter type. For the elements, W size. Now here let's select number. And that is all. Now I can type in only numbers, it will not accept any letters. Now we even have an extra element, which is pretty convenient. If we press the arrows, it adds or subtracts one from our number. Actually, let's set these elements up. Let's set the step, which will be added or subtracted. For that, we will need another parameter, which is called step. I will set it to 0.1, so the step will be 0.1 meters, or 10 centimeters. So now we will be able to change the width of the cabinet by 10 centimeters each step. So let's try it, let's type in a number and click the arrows. And of course you can type in manually whatever digit you want. The next step will be to set the minimum and maximum range for what we can type in. The maximum will be 1.4 meters. And minimum will be 0.8 meters. Basically, it is current width of the cabinet. Right now it is 80 centimeters or 800 millimeters. So let's press play, type in 1 and try to make it less or more. And yep, we hit the limits. For the next step, let's set the default value which will be set in this field right from the start. So, I will set it to 0.8 because it is the current measurement. And it will be like that by default. Let's press play, save and reload to clear the cache. And here we go, the default value is 0.8. And now all we need to do is to create the same but for height and for depth. For that I will just create a new style and drag all the parameters that we have set there. Let's name it size. Now for set prop puzzle, I will not type in the exact parameters, but just type in our class size. Let's press play, and yep, everything works. So let's create two more elements and set them up just the same way. The next element will be changing the height. And we will use the same parameters, just like we have used with width. The only parameters that we need to change will be the range limit, minimum and maximum. And the default value. Also we need to change the object that we will anchor it to. So, the maximum value will be set to 1, minimal to 0.6. Let's press play and here we have another element. Ok, so default value will be 0.6. Let's save, reload and we have our two elements set up. Now we have one last element to set up and it will be for the depth of the cabinet. Again, let's change its name, 
G size or depth size. Let's paste it to all these fields. Then let's set the anchor object. The maximum limit will be 1 and minimal will be 0 0.7. The default value will also be 0 0.7. Let's again save and reload. And here we go, everything works and looks good. Right now the inputs don't do anything, we will make them work in the next tutorial. So, see you there.